Hello, love. Welcome to the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Hosted by Melanie Hogan. I hope all is well with you. Before we begin today's segment, let's do some deep breathing. We're going to inhale, feel your tummy up with air, hold it for three seconds. And then exhale. Just let it all go. We're going to do this three times. One. Two. Three. So for today's segment, this is a PSA to the looters. Those who originally started out in protest but ended up looting in Chicago, TT and the superintendent, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Superintendent David Brown declared justice for these businesses that were impacted, okay? So much so that now those who are so caught up in the vanity of having a camera on them all the time and decided to go live to show people that you was out there with the shit. They are using your evidence against you. So basically, they putting you in a position to where you whooping your own ass. Let's talk about some people who have whooped their own ass. So a tip to CPD, CPD has a looting task force. Did you hear me? They created a looting task force just to go after these people who were engaged in looting here in Chicago. So a tip to CPD leads to a woman's arrest. Authorities said that she broadcast herself live on Facebook looting two stores. Miss Roshan, 22 years old, love, 22 years old, charged with two felony counts of burglary and two felony counts of looting. She was seen in Nordstrom and the Sunglass Hut. The video was reported to YouTube. The looting task force got an anonymous tip about her video and tracked her down. Now she was giving a $400 D-bond, meaning that she had to post the $400 to be released pre-trial. And then she would go on the electronic monitoring system. Little love, you didn't have a criminal record at all, they say. 22 years old with four felony counts. Felonies prohibit access to a lot of resources, a lot of employment. The snapback is heavy. And in the fact that you whoops your own ass, that broadcasting your own self bad and publishing a video like wowzers. Wow, sir. I have said before that 
It's insanity. It's insanity. You have certain push triggers that makes a person, can make a person void of all logic. And all they know how to do is respond. Insanity. We are at a time during a pandemic where we are supposed to have on masks just to protect ourselves and protect others from the coronavirus. I saw so many um, plain faces when they was playing the footage on the news or on uh, people's YouTube, uh, Facebook videos, so many plain faces. This is a time where you wearing a mask won't make you stand out. And then you went and looted a store based on injustice. Based on injustice. I'm hoping it was based on injustice and not just the opportunity to take advantage of the situation. That is like they coming. They have a task force set aside just for this. So while everybody was hee hee and ha ha and posting, and you know, hopefully you got a little lawyer money, bill money, or something tucked to the side. Cause she was in Nordstrom and the sunglasses. Huh? Who you got felonies for some sunglasses? Was it worth it? Now, if you are out there um, just being a part of history, because it is quite common for protesting and looting to actually go, you know, kind of hand in hand. A lot of times it starts out as protest and, you know, the anger, you know, people just start going out. Just looting is nothing new. It's nothing new. And in light of everything that happened, and seeing that the mantra for 2020 is enough is enough. You know, even though people don't have necessarily the most effective strategy, you know, you went out there to do something, to make a stand, to say, nah, y'all gonna tell us down, we're gonna tell you down. Unfortunately, the businesses that were looted had no direct involvement in the altercations with George Floyd nor Latrell Allen. But nevertheless, the looting and the protesting has kind of went hand in hand and has been the response of police brutality and injustice for generations. But here in Chicago, They are using your own evidence against you to slam you. You are whooping your own ass. You whooping your own ass. And then the city gonna come behind you and tap some more. Because these felony counts, not a game, baby. You, all you need is one felony. All you need is one felony to lock you out of a lot of places where you could have been. Lock you out of a lot of resources that you could have obtained. One. All it takes is one. So, hold yourself wasn't the only one. Goodness gracious. We have a Miss Mosby here, 24 years old, charged with one felony count of burglary and one felony count of looting. She was captured on a security camera 
looting a Walgreens and was arrested at the scene. Her bond was set at $5,000. 24 years old, you got caught on site. You looking at two felony counts in Walgreens. Usually when you think of somebody with a felony, you are thinking, you know, something heinous, uh, some type of extreme violation. You know, death. You know, what you get a felony for? Filling out a Walgreens? Damn. That, that, that puts something on your mind. Like it's, and like I said, in the name of justice, sometimes you have to sacrifice. In the name of change, sometimes you have to sacrifice. And sometimes certain moves do need to be made. And sometimes they are extreme moves. But let it be worth it. Make it worth it. I don't know if he looks selfish. 24 years old, I don't know if he looks selfish. The mother already. Or, you know, finishing college. On your way to get your graduate degree trying to open up a business, but these felony counts, if uh, found guilty and seeing that you are on the security camera at the location that you were still. They said they was, uh, they said they was coming. So we got a Mr. Stan Sanders, who's 28 years old charged with one felony count of burglary and one felony count of looting. CPD said that he was observed and positively ID'd as the offender who burglarized and looted a business. Now they didn't indicate which business he uh, burglarized and looted. So it's not like other people just went by and uh, already bust into it and then you came along to dip in and see what she could get you. You kicked it off. You unlocked the door. <laughs> you opened the portal for access. And then took you some stuff. So now you don't whoop your own ass by um you know recording yourself breaking the law in that manner. But you did with your own ass to the point to where you were able to be ID because I bet you didn't have not a mask on, not a hat, not a sunglass, nothing. They just out there to be positively ID. Now I'm not advocating and telling you all to become slicker about how you do the do or whatever, but um are you trying to get caught? Or you just was in the stage of insanity where you just did not give a fuck. You have to understand that we are nowhere near finished with the reason that led us to this point to where we as the people are willing to come together and impact the city or impact the United States or impact the world some type of way in the name of justice. We're not at the um, finish line yet. The officers who enraged everyone back with George Floyd, they still have not, you know, went to trial and been properly found guilty and given the proper uh, punishment for that. More African Americans and Hispanics. And people just have been uh, becoming victims of police brutality. Even after George Floyd, this is still continuing. So we still got some rough patches. And this is like a little, um, 
No, it's not even a little. Just a loud tap, a loud knock. To forewarn you in the future that in the event where these police officers are not dealt with the way that the people feel like they should be dealt with and decide that you want to come out here and get ten up and going off again outside of the guidelines that are given to you as protesters, they coming for your head. So, you know, there is sacrifice when it comes to fighting for injustice. It's sacrifice. It's consequences. If you are willing to sacrifice, fight, sacrifice your life in the name of justice, salute to you. If you are willing to sacrifice your life in the name of some damn sunglasses, some petty shit, get it together. If you're going to go out Go out for a real reason. I don't know if these people involved were protesters impacted by this. Enough is enough. You know, they felt like hollering through the streets wasn't uh, loud enough, wasn't strong enough. We're going to tear, tear the city down. We're going to burn up their stuff. We're going to, you know. We finna make our point to let them know that y'all can't do this to us. That's one thing. That's one thing. But if you out here on some, you ain't got nothing else better to do, or this is an opportunity just to fuck up some shit or just to get you some extra shit, it's like, come on, get it together. Get it together. What is your motive for the moves that you are making? If you're a real soldier out here in these streets and you boots on the ground and you grassroots and you're willing to lay down your life, you're willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the police, you're willing to let them know that this has to stop. This is unacceptable. Power and protection to you. But if you out here interrupting the cause because you just want to be on some bullshit and see what you can get and come up on, stay your ass at home. Everybody needs to be on one level. Even when you all are putting together the protest, y'all just, you're communicating through social media, which, okay, yes, gets the word out faster and to more people, a larger audience. But where are the directions for the people? You just telling having everybody just come out there to show up? You know that they're coming out there, so, you know, we're out here against police brutality. You know, repeat after us as we march through the streets. Before you take those people out there and have them meet up, maybe you should do some type of pre-meet. Start to get these, gather these people's information. Start to actually train and recondition these people to be out here to properly do what is needed to make the point that we're trying to make. Because see, the dumb shit kind of throw, throw it off. Train these people up. The, the, the I don't give a fuck mentality can get you pretty far. But when you're coming up against people who have a strategy in play already, are mentally conditioned a certain way already, especially when it comes to war, you got to come in with a different mindset. Start to gather these people. It should be an organized operation. Not just 
uh, grab the vans in the U-Haul truck. We finna take all this shit. Oh. You saying enough is enough and y'all not gonna do us like this. We're not gonna allow you to do us like this. And then in that sense, you shouldn't even be going to nobody's store. You shouldn't be going to nobody's store. Build these people up to where they can face the real enemy. Start setting them up with insurance policies. Do you hear me? So that in the event where they leave home and they don't come back, they family is covered. Gather them and start working on some uh, mental health and wellness so that they can start to uh, heal some of the trauma that they have experienced in their own life. So that they're, they're, they can allow themselves to be reconditioned to still make their points, but in another way to where they not whooping their own ass. Have everybody on one accord to where if one motherfucker moves, everybody ball. In a strategic, organized fashion. Don't just have these people come out here based on emotion, devastating emotion and just respond. Know thy enemy. Know thy enemy. Don't just let these people call these people out here and then people with no background. And, and you know, regardless of whatever the whole say, you as an individual should have the right, the right and the wherewithal to agree or disagree. So at no point, you know, were these people forced to go into these businesses and loot. The protesting and the looting has just kind of become a common response to police brutality and injustice and such. War against the machine. Prep these people. If you want to be out here and you want to involve yourself in it, everybody has, has a role that they can play. It's not just protesting. It's not just food. It's a lot of roles that you can play as far as, you know, starting to help you some kind of improvement. Here, this should be uh, before the protesters get out there. Everybody should have been able to have something to put on their stomach. You don't know if people's coming out here, if they had something to even eat that day. People should be hydrated. It should be certain nonverbal communication that could be communicated amongst others in the face of the enemy so that they're not reading what you're saying. Like, come on, baby. Stop just calling these people out here to just, to just gather. And then they whole little lives is just turned around. Only for these police to continue to get out here and still be shooting people unjustly. You said you want to make an impact. Know your enemy. Let's move past this passive aggressive activity. But see, baby, that's going to take some healing and that's going to take some reconditioning. That's going to take some preparation. That's going to take you knowing a version of yourself to know that you can get out here and you can stand and you're going to keep standing 
even when it's starting to get shaky and, you know, tough. And know whether or not you that type of person who wants to endure that type of energy or endure that type of pressure. Don't just send them out here like little stray dogs. Everybody just beating up. Prepare they little cells. You brought them out here in the name of injustice. It's a, it's a risky situation. And they should be prepared. They should be covered somehow. And you know, it's a good thing that, you know, you have organizations to where after the protesters and stuff are arrested, you have organizations who are going down here and they're bailing these people out. You don't come down here and we're going to bail you out because we know that you was moving on behalf of the movement. So we got you. Okay, so that part is good. But see, it seems like we always come in on the correction part versus the prevention part. We would avoid so much, so much pain if we was a little more proactive on that prevention part. So, you know, we have a, another young lady, and a lot of these are young ladies whose names are on here, and this is just a few, 26-year-old, Lil Love is charged with two felony counts of theft. She was found in possession of the merchandise when she was arrested. Arrested. She looted Hermes and Nordstrom. And, a, and now understand this. Let, listen to this. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, Hermes is very um, popular in the hip hop culture and stuff, you know. We like some of the Nordstrom's too, but especially with the Hermes. Um, one, by the time they called up with you, you know, you had possession. Possession is nine tenths of the law, it's yours. You got it, you did it. You had the stuff on you, right? So now, imagine you, this is how she got caught. A Hermes employee later saw some bracelets. She stole some bracelets up out there. And one of the employees saw her try to resell the bracelet on the resale app. She just scrolling, probably through Posh, probably through Let Go. You know, one of them the resale app, just scrolling. She like, are those the bracelets that was up in our store? Are those the bracelets? Those the stolen bracelets out of our store. And then what she do? Turn your tail in. Now, Miss Howard was hustling. Obviously, she wasn't trying to use those bracelets for personal usage. She was trying to get her some money. And during this pandemic and everything that's been going on, a lot of people uh, are in need of more money. The children are at home all day. People are in need of more money. So she was trying to get her hustle on, whether legal or illegal. But because a Hermes employee identified the bracelet and contacted police, they had some undercover officers meet up with her to buy merchandise. And that's when they arrested her. She had no criminal record and was given a $10,000 I-bond. 
Because she had the merchandise on her, the officers were able to return the bracelet back to the store. Mr. Davis, 21 years old, charged with two felony counts of theft, one felony count of looting, and one felony count of burglary. All these Fs. 21 years old. You just became like legal. You could go into a bar and get you a little something to drink. Now you finna be dressed up in a little IDOC little jumpsuit. They don't even mention where he was doing, doing his little business at. Then we have a Miss Williams. Now she is 33 years old. Charged with one felony count of burglary and one felony count of looting. Now, the prosecutor said that this particular lady was seen on a security camera stealing medications from Walgreens and arrested at the scene. So this is another uh, lady who was in Walgreens. Now, what tugs at my heart in this situation is the fact that she was stealing medication. And I'm not Thing that she was justified for stealing medications because somebody was sick or whatever or that it was okay for her to just go up in there and take them but it's kind of a different way you know what I'm saying just a, a need if depending on whatever uh, medication she was stealing it was for somebody that's sick at home somebody who ill that she know that like don't have the money to get this type of stuff you know, it's kind of a Robin Hood situation, you know. Uh, nevertheless, and it's like, listen, y'all know these stores got cameras. That's just like going on Warby and going into the green room and then getting surprised when you busted for falling for the little trap, the little thirst trap that they set up for you. And, you know, you didn't know. You know they got cameras up in there. Do you subconsciously want to get caught? Is this a state of insanity? You know, and Lord knows I'm not an advocate of the KKK. But in the sense of knowing thy enemy, these people want to say getting caught like this. Somebody took the time to think and say, you know what? I got a wife, I got some kids, I got this business I'm running. I got some stuff I want to do in my life. And I don't need the law at my door. So let's just cover up, minimize the print, burn the stuff after we finish with it, to minimize the chances of the law coming back to our door. Even though a lot of KKK is the law. That's another, that's a whole nother. But, but just that idea right there to where I'm not going to sacrifice my whole life for this. These people have, y'all got felonies. That's less me. You know, it's, it's crazy about the law. You know, and it's variations to how people can rule, how the ruling can come out. Um, but really, like, at this point, I don't know how many judges are going to be lenient. You know, they may sit and you say, well, it's the moment of, you know, I don't know, whatever you, whatever you say in front of the judge. Whatever your rationale is. And that judge may hear you out and empathize with you. But the law is the law. 
and there was an injustice done to people who had nothing to do with the reason why you were out there. And now something must be done about that. So, it's a lot of chaos. And this one, they still in medicine. And then they said, after they ran her name, Miss Williams, she had a failure to appear from 2017. And a misdemeanor domestic battery from 2008. Lord have mercy. Her bond was set at $4,000. So Miss Williams, you know, you didn't kind of get your feet wet a little bit um, when it comes to the judicial system. So this one shows first the rodeo. And note that failure to appear follows you years later. It'll catch up with you because they notate that. They notate that. So now when you done got caught up in something else, now your history, your past been caught up with you. Because they still had you on the list from when you failed to appear whatever previous time. So that is extra little trouble. And they saying that anyone with info is asked to go to the Area 3 Looting Task Force website or call Area 3 Detectives at 1312-744-8263. This will definitely be a bad time to have your enemies or people that you have been mistreating help teach you, help humble you. Because it was a lot of people out there looting. And if you did not, you know, go live through Facebook, publish yourself so somebody else didn't identify you who was like out there, but you went home and you told your people or your, your block saw you moving certain stuff into your house. Depending on the neighborhood, police might be at your door next. At your door next. They have a whole special task force just for the looters. Now, the decision is always yours to make. Just like you will be the one to, to reap the rewards from it. You will be the one to reap the consequences for it. You just have to decide if the looting aspect of the uh, protesting, of the fight back, if the looting aspect of it is worth a felony. Is it worth a felony? They said they was coming. And these are some little young shy loving it. The love y'all y'all young. Twenty four, twenty eight, twenty six, twenty one, thirty three. And these sons, they they are just not good to have on your background. But I will tell you this. You can still do great things with your life despite the them. You may just have to go different routes. It may take a little longer, it may be a little harder. But you can still do greatness. You can still make a difference. And if you're going out there in the name of change and protecting the people, hugs to you, protection to you, elevation to you. If you're going out there to be on some bullshit and come against the common goal. Have a seat. Because you're a liability. And we don't need any liabilities during this time.
we don't need any liabilities during this time. And because of that, before y'all start to call those people out to come and meet up with you to set it off, make sure that you are coming with some type of resources to cover and protect them, to cover and protect each other. Make sure you are plainly letting it be known what these people are up against. What is your risk management plan in the event where something goes wrong? Shall I love salute to the organization who go to these police stations and scream and holler out there all night to let these people go and going up in there and paying them a uh, bond? But before we keep on doing these, these gatherings, it need to be some type of way to where, I don't know if you want to have a Zoom conference, you know, however you want to get the instructions out, get the resources out so that people can prepare themselves. Make sure people have enough of the food on their tummy to give them the energy to endure everything that they're going to have to endure for however long. Stop just telling everybody, come on, run up. And then people get laid out. Tell me. The choice is yours. Sometimes you could be doing the right thing, but doing it the wrong way. You just need like a, a different route. But the goal is the same. We stand with the people here at the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. But let's not keep letting everybody run up and be on the front line so that they can be sacrificed so easily. Let's take the necessary steps that we need to take as individuals and as a people to prepare ourselves for times such as this. To where when a strike, when we strike, it's effective and not just making more noise. We love y'all, Lucia. And we will see you later with the Shy Love Radio Show, Pop Radio Worldwide, iHeart Radio, and Spotify Premium. Hugs.